Praise God. Let's lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for this awesome meeting. Thank you for the anointing that's here to remove every burden and destroy every yoke. Thank you for the anointing on me and these lips of clay that I speak forth your word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Think through my mind, speak to my lips, and this word shall come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Take a seat, please. Amen. I think I'm going to come down here where the people are. Amen. I'll leave the angels up there and I'll come down where the people are. Well, praise the Lord. And, oh, this is a good-looking crowd, isn't it? My goodness. Well, I'm glad to be here. This is really my first opportunity to minister at the Minister's Conference or the uh, Believer's Conference here, Southwest. But it's a good time. It's, it looks good. Y'all look good. I'm glad I'm here. Amen. Before I get started, just want to just want to introduce my wife, my sister Veronica over here. Why don't you stand up, baby, and let them see how lovely you are. Amen. Well, let's get right into the Word of God because after me comes Brother Copeland, so I don't want to run over time. Hallelujah. <laughs> let's go over to Galatians chapter 5. Now, this that I'm going to give you is not new, um, <clears throat> but it does take some what I call work or meditation to really get the, the, the principle right and get it into your system. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I think it is, it said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established, and believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. So God desires for us to prosper. And um, right now, I'm your prophet. I said right now, I'm your prophet. And um, so as we look at this, um, I'm recalling another scripture over in Romans chapter 10, where he talks about in verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is Lord over all that call upon, and rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, how then shall they call on him whom they've not believed? Well, how can they believe on him whom they've not heard? And they, how can they hear without a preacher? I'm your preacher. And how shall they preach except they be sent? I've been sent. Amen. And we're going to hear some things today. And what I'd like you to do is make up your mind right now that you're going to believe the Word of God. Amen. Really, I mean, because, you know, when you really believe the Word of God, you've got some proof in your life. I tell people all the time, if faith has no proof, it's a fake. <laughs> but you're supposed to have proof in your life. You're supposed to be further along next year than you are this year. In other words, when we see you at the Believers Conference next year, it's supposed to be that you're supposed to have gained some ground. Say amen to that. Because that's what this word's supposed to do. The Bible says in Job chapter what? 8 verse 7, though thy beginning be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. Psalm 115, verse 14, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. So God has increase on his mind. Yes. Say increase. Yes. Say it loud like you got some. Yes. 
Increase. God's got increase on his mind. So he does want you to increase. Um, we came when I first started ministry in Chicago, my wife and I, we came and the family came with uh, $200. And um, we started there, but we've got a little bit more than 200 right now. <laughs> can, you, can I get an amen on that? <laughs> and so what God did for Bill Winston, uh, he'll do for you. He said over in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, and Peter said, I perceive that God is no respect of person, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So no respect of person, what God will do for us, he'll do for you. And he'll do it right now. You don't have to wait a long time and hope and, you know, hope that the creek don't rise and so forth. Now, this is a prophetic time that we're in right now. And uh, God is doing some things right now that I think have never ever been done on the face of this planet. But not only that, he's given us some insight and revelation on some things that he has never given before. And uh, for you to go to do another level, you're going to have to eat on another level. So we're going to feed you today on another level. Now, this is going to be the beginning of mine. Today, we're going to call it Restoring the Eden Blessing. Restoring the Eden Blessing. Now, that's for today. On Thursday, when I speak again, we're going to continue that with a topic called the Wealth Transfer. The Wealth Transfer. Now, these two topics kind of run together because they're related in a way. So now, as we look at this, I saw that God has provided some better things for us, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 40, and that he said in Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 that better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Over in Joel, he said that he'll restore to us a year that the canker worm is eaten. And he said, you're going to have... You're going to have the former and the latter rain in the first month. And I firmly believe the former rain is the harvest. The latter rain is a beautification. That God is about to beautify the church. I mean, beautify it. I mean, they're having meetings now where the Holy Ghost is moving in with an anointing that, that's healing everybody. And one man jumped up to praise the Lord and his pants fell down. <laughs> And uh, because he just discovered he lost 50 pounds while the preacher was preaching. You want to know where that meeting is, don't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Blessed be God. Amen. But I want you to just believe the Word of God and expect God to move on your life on another level. The Bible talks about, I think it's in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3, that God pours water on ground that's thirsty. I truly believe you wouldn't be here if you weren't thirsty for the Word of God. All right, so let me read this, and let's start here um, at Galatians, and Galatians chapter, now I want you to read this at, as we read it now, kind of with, with your revelation on. Galatians chapter, uh, let me get here. I need, I need a big podium, like Sister Gloria do. I need that big podium. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay, look at verse 3. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the Scripture foreseeing, that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Underline that. In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. How many of you all are of faith? 
Yeah, okay. Well, you're blessed with faithful Abraham. Come on down to verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of who? Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. How? Through faith. Through faith. Now that's key. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 15, I think it's verse 6, he said that you have made the Word of God of none effect by your tradition. You have made the Word of God of none effect by your tradition. All right, let's think about that. Let me give you an illustration. This woman uh, had just gotten married and she was cooking for her new husband. And um, she was cooking a roast. And she cut the end off the roast, put it in the pot, put it in the oven. And her husband uh, noticed uh, the procedure and he asked her, he said, uh, she, he said, now why did you cut the end off the roast to put it in the pot? She said, honey, I don't know. Mama cut the end off her roast and put it in the pot and put it in the oven. Let me call Mama and see. So she called Mama. Mama, uh, why did you cut the end off the roast to put it in the pot, to put it in the oven. Baby, I don't know. <laughs> Big Mama cut the end off the roast, put it in the pot, put it in the oven. Let me call her. Big Mama, uh, why did you cut the end off the roast, to put it in the pot, to put it in the oven? Oh, baby, I did that because the pot was too small. <laughs> Now, what am I saying? It's amazing how many things have passed down and we have taken them traditionally. For the Word, for example. And we just hear it and traditionally hear it and, and even uh, rehearse it and so forth. But does it have the impact that it's supposed to have and where is the faith in that word to make that word work for you? For example, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ears to my sayings, and let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The word of God is health. And if you look that word up in the Hebrew, it also means medicine. So the Word of God is the original medicine. Now, I'm saying that because now we're reading that, and this Word of God is powerful enough to heal anything. Yes, sir. Now, now, you know, we come and, and nothing wrong with this now, so I'm not preaching any condemnation, anything, but, but we have a medicine cabinet because we're expecting sick leave so we can tend to this sickness through that. Now, that medicine is okay, but that's not the original medicine. <laughs> you know, and the medicine is the Word. And we're expected to start maybe there, but grow up in the Word. Amen. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, prayer of faith will save the sick of the Lord or raise him up. Then it sins will be forgiven. Didn't say anyone among you sick? Let him call Mount Sinai Hospital over in the emergency room and so forth. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? I'm saying we're coming to hear this, see, but we got to grow up. Now, this is really going to make sense when I talk about the wealth transfer because you can't slay giants as a child. Amen. Amen. 
God's got something big for you. I'm talking about you are the harvesting generation. You're the ones that God's been waiting on. You're the ones, I believe, that's going to cause the largest wealth transfer that's ever been seen on the face of this planet. Now, we've got to understand tradition about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is powerful. I was reading a book, a man talked about how he um, you know, had a revelation of the blood and was in his garage doing some carpentry work and came up, lifted up his head and poof, a gash right in the middle of his forehead. Gash open, a nail was sticking out and gashed it open and blood just poured out everywhere. He said, I plead the blood. He kept saying that. All of a sudden, blood stopped. I'm talking about within moments now. Then he kept saying, I plead the blood. Next thing you know, the scar closed up. He kept saying, I plead the blood. Next thing you know, the scar disappeared. Amen. Now, I'm talking about believe. Yes. Amen. Say amen to this. Amen. How about the name of Jesus? Yes. The name of Jesus is all powerful. Yes. See, you just don't drop something on the ground. Oh, Jesus. Well, now, see, that's callously lose using that. Yeah, that. Is there any faith in that? Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, when the man who was sitting by the, um, at the gate of the temple, Peter and John passing by, looked on him, and he was, you know, giving alms, asking for alms. Somebody said he was asking for alms and got legs. But he was asking for alms, <laughs> and... And they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Boom, jumped, man jumped, I had never walked, leaping, praising God, and went into the temple. What am I saying? I'm saying, Peter said, wait a minute, why are you looking on us? As through our own holiness, we made this man to walk. But his name, through faith in his name, has made this man whole. So you got the word. You got the blood, you got the name, but you also you have the blessing. The blessing. Now this blessing is a point of discussion between from the beginning of this Bible all the way to the end. Now I'm gonna help you because I probably won't get there. Let's go all the way to the end of the book of Revelation. And let's go over to Revelation chapter 5. How many believers I have in here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Revelation chapter 5. Over to Revelation chapter 5, and look at verse 11. Here's what he says. And I beheld and heard a voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was what? Slain for us. To, uh, slain to receive power and what else? Riches and what else? Wisdom. Come on, what else? Strength. Come on, what else? Honor. Uh-huh. Keep going. Glory and what else? Blessing. Blessing. That's in Revelation. That's called, put it in your Bible, my inheritance package. Got it? Every one of those things is a message. And that is what you've got. It will round out everything. And this blessing is the last thing he put on there. Now, notice there was no S on blessing because he's not talking about blessings. Deuteronomy 28, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and keep the statutes, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your basket, blessed in your store, blessed when you come in, blessed when you go out, blessed in the fruit of your basket, fruit of your kind. And when the enemy comes against you one way, he'll flee before you seven ways. The Lord will make you plentiful and good. You'll be the head, not the tail. The lid. All these are blessings. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the one that brings that. Amen. 
the blessing, the blessing. And we want to look at that because that's what you want operating in your life. And notice he said, you got to have faith to do it. How does faith come? Come on. By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the blessing is going to come and operate through your life by faith. So faith is coming by hearing. So I'm going to give you <coughs> today knowledge that will bring faith for you operating in the blessing from this point on. Amen. All right, now, let's see one more scripture that just talks about the blessing, because I want to get that word. And from now on, when you think about it, make it a capital B. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, please. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Look what it says here in verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it, oh Lord, it maketh what? rich, and addeth what? No sorrow. I have another translation here, and here's what it says. The blessing of Yahweh is what brings riches. To this hard toil has nothing to add. Has nothing to add. This whole idea of the blessing Toil has nothing to add. Jesus went around teaching the blessing. Everywhere he went, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath what? Anointed me. The blessing of God, of the Lord, is the anointing of God that de through which divine favor will flow. The blessing of the Lord is the covenant of God that overrides the curse. The blessing of the Lord is the power of God to produce or reproduce. The blessing. Now say this, the blessing of the Lord is in my life right now. All right, let's go back and look at it. Come on back to Genesis, please. Now, if you hadn't thought about it, Brother Copeland wrote a book on it that is outstanding. But I'm going to give it to you because I believe this blessing and its teaching is the key for the church to move into this place of dominion in these last days and close this thing out to get it ready for Jesus' return. All right, Genesis chapter 1. How many came for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today? Praise God. Now, here's God creating, and he's creating things. So look what it says here in verse 26. And God said... Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, God gave you dominion over creeps. Okay. That's a little joke there. That's a little real. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, this created in his own image is exact duplicate of kind. God duplicated himself. <clears throat> this is powerful, folks. <laughs> See, when you're talking about man, you're really talking about who you are inside. Amen. See, you, you, we're talking about that. We're talking about this person on the inside because this person on the inside is the one that's after God's image. This, this, this is the real you. 
This body that you carry around now, it's going to go back to the dust. But the real you, you're going to live forever somewhere. And the reason why this body is like it is, here's my jacket. The reason why this jacket fits me, so forth, because it was cut for me. See, your body was put over you. You got what I'm saying? And whatever your body's got, you've got. You got what I'm saying? If I've got eyes that, that notice when, when, when the prophet was surrounded by the Syrian army, notice what happened. The, 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 the junior prophet in training, the Ge Gehazi, he, he said, Lord, Master, what are we going to do now? We're surrounded. He said, wait a minute, there are more that be with us than be with them. And he's, I'm sure the, the, the young training prophet got, he, he got caught up in that. He started counting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1, 2. And what is he talking about? I know the boss ain't wrong. Now, here's the thing. He said, he prayed, Lord, open his eyes. Not if it be thy will. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And he opened his eyes, and when he opened them, he saw angels surrounding the Syrian army. Now, wait a minute. Weren't his eyes open, and that's the way he saw the Syrians? Yes or no? He, his, the servant's eyes were open. That's the way he saw the Syrian, the enemy soldiers. That's the way he saw them. Why would the prophet pray, Lord, open his eyes? See, you got another set of eyes. Come on, you got another, you got another tongue. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Everything you've got on the physical side, you've got on the spiritual side. That's the only way the spiritual side, the physical side will exist. If, if your, if somebody's spirit goes on to be with the Lord, what will happen to their body? It'll fall. What will happen to it if nobody picks it up? It'll go back to the what? Dust. Notice the only reason it's existing, because you're existing. Yes. Say so amen to that. Yes. And maturity is when you develop a walk in the Spirit. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. That's the more mature you get. You're not moved by what you see. You're not moved by what you feel. You, I know you may be limping, but by his stripes. Come on, come on, come on. Help me now. And the physical world is dominated by the more powerful world of the spirit. You were created a ruler. Not inferior to anything, Psalm 8. What is man that thou art mindful of him, of the son of man that thou visited him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. They have crowned him with glory and honor and have made him to have dominion over all the works of thy hands. Say amen to that. Amen. You are a powerful somebody. Amen. Man. You were made to speak things into existence. <laughs> Call things that be not as though they were. Isn't that powerful? Can I keep going? Yeah. All right. Okay, in Genesis chapter 28, uh, 128. All right, look what it says. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. Ooh, Lord. And multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Glory to God. So now here's God. These are the first words that Adam and Eve heard. God blessed them and said unto them. Now, he wasn't communicating so much. Right now, he's transferring power. What power? The blessing. How powerful is the blessing? 
It is the most powerful thing that exists on planet Earth. It is what God used to create the Earth. And what He's passing on to us to continue the work of creation, watch this, and to govern the Earth. The blessing. Say, I'm blessed. Now, he's given this to Adam. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. The word replenish means to stock with abundance. It means to recover form of fullness. It means to perpetually renew and supply. You with me? You know what I said? Now, I know y'all just ate, but you better wake up. <laughs> because your blessing is coming right by you. This ain't no time to sleep. This blessing. Everywhere Adam went, the blessing was to create the garden before him. Wherever he goes in the earth, because the garden was a spot, he was to now expand this garden to make every place in it look like the garden with the blessing, the power, same power God used to create, the same power now he's given Adam to continue creation. Let's go to a scripture. Let's go to Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 33. Pardon me. Ezekiel chapter 36. Over in Ezekiel chapter 36, I'd like to read starting with verse 33. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled, wherein it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the what? Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places. I plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Say amen to that. Amen. Now, what is happening here? Over in the city of Newark, I was sent this by a mailing of a dear friend and he was talking about what was happening with prayer evangelism. They were going out in the various places in Newark, which at that time was the murder. The rate was one of the highest in the United States. 70% of the people were unemployed or something on welfare, something in Newark. It was, it was a terrible situation. So what they did, they went two by two. One, they wanted agreement. Second, according to Job chapter 22 and verse 28, thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So they'd walk down the street and they'd bless this crack house. And what are they doing? They're not trying to cause crack to prosper. That's what, <laughs> I think you can figure that out. <laughs> They're not attempting to do that. But they are calling heaven down in it. Now, let me show you that. Glory to God. Y'all with me? Yeah. Let's look at Isaiah 51. Now, in Isaiah 51, 
I told you don't go to sleep. Isaiah 51, look what it starts now talking about Abraham. Hearken to me, verse 1, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock of which you are hewed, unto the hole in the pit of which you are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone, say alone, and blessed him, say blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. The Lord shall comfort Zion. Glory to God. Now this, Lord, I'm not going to stop. I got to go. Verse, and, and let me continue to read. Zion is symbolizing the church. We are about to see with this revelation of the blessing, a move of God in services that whatever you got ailing you won't be ailing you when this service is over. I told you to believe your prophet. Didn't I tell you to believe your prophet? And he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of what? Melody. Come on down to verse 16. And I have put my words in your mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand, that I may what? Plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. Plant the what? Heavens. There are blueprints in heaven of buildings. There are warehouses with spare body parts. <laughs> Folks, this man had taken God, took him and took him on a tour. The angels took him and showed him. And he said he even saw some legs and so forth. And what happened? They, they had a tag on them. Some of them even had a name on the leg and the feet that had been amputated because of diabetes, and that replacement part was right there in the warehouse in heaven. I'm not talking about heaven when you get there. Jesus said, pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. God is Jehovah. Jaira. It means not the God who just provides. That's half the meaning. It means the God who sees and provides. He saw the problem that you're going to have, and he's got a replacement part for you. Oh, come on now. Every part. He said the warehouse had no sides to it. He said he saw new music. He heard new music. He even went to a place and saw inventions. But that was a place where big angels were standing out with something that looked like giant fly swatters. They were standing out because they said Satan tries to break in that place because one invention can make you a billionaire in a month. Folks, wisdom has been laid up for the righteous. The first assignment that we have when we had when we came to Chicago was a storefront church at an area called Lake and Pulaski. Now, Lake and Pulaski was a very, very, very rough area. As a matter of fact, it was the highest crime area in Chicago when we first came. That was back in 1980, started the ministry back in 1989. 
So here we were. That was our assignment. Remember, once you become a kingdom citizen, you're no longer employed, you're deployed. Now, Christianity was never meant to be dictated. It was meant to be demonstrated. Amen. Say amen. amen. So here we were, and we had grown to about 50 people. So one day we were in there, I was in there having a prayer meeting. Yeah, we are just kind of praying. And a lady broke in the front door. Who's the pastor in here? I said, I'm the pastor. I need your help. I said, what's wrong, lady? The drug dealers have taken over our block. I said, okay. She said, they come out at 12 noon. They don't leave till 12 midnight. They sell drugs all during this time. Our kids cannot play. The, all the residents are terrified. They got guns, everything. I said, lady, get in this circle. Why? because I'm about to seek headquarters. Now, I'm not going to try to think this out because it ain't in there. And the world is trying to solve these levels of problems without the blessing. That's why you got so many side effects. Here, drink this medication. Take a teaspoonful of it. Now, you may have a heart attack. Your kidney may quit. You also go blind and so forth, but take it anyway. Because that's all they got. You got the blessing. The Bible says the whole earth is waiting for the manifestation. I mean, everybody else has come out of the closet. You come on out. And can just come on out. Just start blessing. So she got in there. So I'm not seeking whether this is in here because that's intellect. And the intellect of Egypt, as, as progressive as they were, could not cause them to avoid the famine that was coming. It ain't in there. Ha ha, later running now. Blessed. Y'all laughing. She might be a multimillionaire by this time tomorrow. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right. Now, so she got in a circle. We prayed. Saw at headquarters. What am I doing? Downloading. I'm just downloading now. That's all I want to do, download. Every time I have a problem, I download. I ain't trying to figure it out because if I figure it out, I get into toil. If I get into toil, I leave faith. And if I leave faith, the blessing won't work. Okay? Boom! There it is. I say, lady, the Lord's telling me to bless this oil right here that I've got here at the church. Bless this, this, this oil and have you to go to your block and start pouring it down one end to the other. She said, okay. Now, understand, when you're desperate, you don't do all that. Well, I don't know. See, you ain't desperate enough. You need to get a little desperate sometime to break out of the box of your thinking. Say amen to that. Your feet will never go where your mind has never been. So what happened? She took that bottle up there to her block, poured it down the street, came back and about five days later, broke in the door, pastor. I said, what? Guess what? Now, I knew what. I said, I knew what. This blessing is the most powerful thing in the world. It's meant for the worst places in the earth. It'll turn anything into a garden, including your marriage. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I was coming that way, did you? You take that word and begin to confess it over your situation. I'm telling you, it will turn it into a garden of Eden. Heaven will become your marriage. 
So what happened? She said, Pastor, the next day they came out for, for uh, one hour and left and never came back. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did it make sense? No, because it had to make faith. He didn't tell me to tell her to go to the local precinct. Tell, tell the police captain that he didn't tell me to tell her to form a block club now, because you know, them block club. Blah, 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 blah. He told me to tell her to bless this oil as he told me to bless it and tell her to pour it. There's power in the bottle. So what am I saying? I'm saying. I don't care what the situation is because the world now is coming into situations that they can't solve. That's because it's time for you. Yeah. Say amen to that. Yeah. And folks, you, you, got to, you got to go where you can't trace. I mean, when he told Noah to build an ark, it never rained. Is somebody here? <laughs> you got to hear him and do it. That's right. Amen. So now, here's his blessing on Adam. But what did he do? God said, don't eat of this tree. What did he do? Disobeyed God. What happened to the blessing? Gone. Now mankind has fallen, and here's God. Even though Adam blew it, God didn't change his mind. My Lord. Even though you blew it, he still didn't change his mind. Isn't that good news? Man, how many of y'all ever messed up before? Put your hand down. <laughs> How many of y'all ever messed up with the same deal? Said the same mess up, mess up same time. I'm just saying, isn't God good? Yes. See, don't 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 look so much at yourself. Look to Jesus. Yes. He's the one who paid that price for us. Yes. All right, so we messed up. So now. God's got to get this blessing back because God's word will not return unto him. Lord. It's going to accomplish what it said. So what does he do now? Things got progressively worse. What happened? A flood. Here comes a flood, wipes out everything. All right. Now he finds a man named Noah. Turn to Genesis chapter 9. By the way, while you're turning there, let me just tell you what happened as they were walking and blessing Newark. Here's a result of it. Now, just listen to me when I say this. Facebook founder Mike, uh, Mark Zuckerberg chose Newark over all the cities of the nation to invest $100 million to transform underperforming schools. Panasonic Corpor Corporation recently announced that they are relocating their U.S. headquarters to downtown Newark. Folks, Here's another one with a $15 billion expansion that is going to save 130,000 jobs taking place in Newark. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Most of the supernatural of God is not spectacular. You remember that. Most of the supernatural is not spectacular. And that's what you want to remember because a lot of times 
we look, when we say something, we look for a big poof. No, 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 no. Some of it, you don't even notice it changed. Peter calling to remembrance when they passed by the fig tree. Master, look, look. Nobody else noticed it. Look, the fig tree, would you curse yesterday? It's withered away. Jesus said, have faith in God. For whosoever shall say to this mountain. Notice, he cursed the tree, but when they came back the next day, most of them didn't even notice the change. See, they'll look at this and say, oh, well, that just happened because, you know, praise the Lord. No, it happened because of the blessing. I command heaven down in this crack house. And that crack house disappeared and a new house got built there. Do you all hear what I'm saying? Now notice what you got to do. You got to believe in the blessing because it puts you in a whole nother category. And you can't talk against the blessing. Can I show you that real quick? Yes. Let me just show you that. Now, we're coming back to Genesis chapter 9, but let me just show you this. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30, please. Now, all this we've taught before. Brother Copeland and I have taught this, but I'm, I saw when he wrote that book, I said, this is the message for the body of Christ. This, this is the one. Deuteronomy chapter 30. How are we doing? We're doing okay? Yeah. Now, I don't want you to go to sleep over now. Yeah. Amen. Because if I see you sleeping, I might have to come give you, give you $100. <laughs> what y'all laughing at? Y'all don't think I got it? Yeah, yeah, right there. Raise your hand. Right there, uh-huh, right there, uh-huh. Not you, the one before you, one on, on the next level below you. Right there, uh-huh, yeah, you. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, I'm blessed. And see, he wants you not only to be blessed, but he wants you to be a blessing. Now, I'm just going to peel her off one. Here's a hundred dollars. Take somebody to lunch or something. Now, did I see a hand over here? No, I didn't think so. Okay, now, as we look at this, God bless you. <laughs> All right, look at this. Now, where did I tell you to turn? Deuteronomy chapter 30. All right. Look what he says here in Deuteronomy chapter 30. He said in verse 19, I have, and I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've set before you what? Life and what? Death. Keep going. Blessing and what? Cursing. Therefore choose what? Life that both, come on, you and your seed shall live. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Now, he's setting before you a choice. You can choose life or death. Keep going. Blessing or cursing. Which one do you choose? Life. Choose life. Now, how do you choose life? Watch this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So I choose it right here. I can speak life over my finances. Now, now you got to listen to the Holy Ghost because he may tell you this. When you go back to the hotel, he may tell you this. Put your pocketbook on the table. Step back three paces, point at it, and command money to come into it. See, he, he just may do that. See, wait a minute. See, I didn't get a lot of amens on that. You know what? You need to get your mind up. There's nowhere in this Bible that human logic ever produced a miracle. Man, you're going to have to speak to stuff. I told you about this couple. This couple was that we had been preaching on supernatural and all this and debt cancellation and so forth. And they got a hold of this thing. 
The Lord led him to buy a new car. So he went to the place to buy a new car. The guy said, okay, you need a new car, and they didn't have any money. So he said, well, let me look up your credit, see if you got any credit. So it, they had picked a car out. He got, the guy said, sir, I am sorry for you and your wife. We just can't do anything for you. His credit was so bad. He sat back in a chair. The Spirit of God spoke to him and said, get up and march around the car that you want seven times. He told his wife, come on, baby. He got up. Now, I understand the man's looking at him because he's, he's in the showroom. <laughs> Watch this. Then he went back and sat down. Spirit of God said, tell him to look it up again. The man looked it up. The man said, wait a minute. Hold it. Something must be wrong here. Hey, give me your number again. That's it. So wait a minute, some wrong. God had erased all bad debt in his name. Don't tell me if you can march around a city and the walls fall down. We need some folk that are out of their mind. with me. I am coming out in Jesus' name. This is your day. In this series of meetings, you are being released. Let me finish it. <laughs> the devil ain't got no hole here. You are God's special people. You are royalty. You are, have been made rich beyond your wildest imagination. Now grab it and run with it. Let me finish, let me finish this. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Something about to happen. Yeah. See, all he needs you to do is expect it. Yeah. Say, I'm a believer. I'm, a believer. I'm not a doubter. What the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I have what the word says I have. Now give God praise for it. Now it's obvious I'm not gonna be able to finish this, but let me do that. Let me do this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9. Because I had you somewhere else. Where did I have you? No, I did that. Genesis chapter 9. Come on over there. Come on over there. Now, see what I'm doing now? I'm, I'm getting you to eat on another level. So you're receiving by faith. Oh, something about to break in here. I can feel it, boy. I feel it in the spirit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Genesis chapter 9. Look at it. Are you, are you with me? Verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, what? Be Say, be fruitful. Say, be healed, be healed and multiply, and what else? Replenish the earth, 
All right, now where do you remember those words? Where do you remember those words? God spoke them to Adam. Don't be looking around at other folk. Look at me. I'm the preacher. I'm, the, I'm preaching. They just doing what God told them to do. I'm preaching. Look at me. Look, keep your eyes on me. We're in the military here. Keep your eyes on me. Oh, this thing about to break loose, folks. I said, this is about to break loose. Now, now, wait a minute. Look what happened here. Look what happened. All of a sudden, here's Adam, I mean, uh, Noah. He's coming off the ark, not a ship, a ark, a barge. He's coming off of it. Now, notice, he's coming out, he and his family and a bunch of animals. Now, what do they see? Now, I want you to help me with this. Now, realize that it was the flood. God couldn't have him to build a ship because a ship could not stand the violence that was going to take place in those waters. How about 15 Katrinas? Every tree rooted up. Everything living is dead. He then opened the door of the ark, and what do you think Noah saw? Nothing. Come on, nothing. Watch this, glory to God. He then conferred the blessing on it. Notice he put the blessing on a man who was stepping into a world with nothing. And if you got the blessing on your life, you can step into something with nothing and make it like heaven on earth. Now give the Lord a praise. That's all I got. <laughs> Woo! Now, now wait a minute. Sit down. I want to bless you. Bless you. I'm going to bless you. Do you believe the prophet? Do you believe I've been sent by God? Well, then you going to believe what I'm about to say to your life. First, I'm going to bless you out of Numbers chapter 6. We have traditionally looked at that as the benediction. And we just listen to it and say, praise the Lord. No, my friends, let me read it to you out of Numbers chapter 6 and verse 22. And the Lord said to Moses, saying, speak unto Aaron, who was the high priest, and to his son, saying, on this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, the Lord bless you keep you. To bless means to speak good things or to speak something and by faith empower it to come to pass. So once I bless you, I don't need to be with you. What I spoke has just been empowered by faith to come to pass. <laughs> the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Gracious means grace, which means favor. That God's favor from this meeting on is going to be in your life like never before. Supernatural increase, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, prominence, preferential treatment. You will have battles won which you didn't have to fight. 
forward. And the last thing, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That word peace means shalom. It means health, prosperity, well-being, safety, happiness. It means blessed. So from this day, your season of manifestation has come. Everything that's been against you ago that the reason God put in the scripture his prophetic word through the mouths of his prophets was to put words in the mouths of his people. because he is the high priest of our saying the same thing. That activates his ministry as high priest, and instead of being a passenger in the boat, he takes over the boat because we're saying what he said. Now, this ain't a one-time thing this afternoon. You've been blessed. And according to the third chapter of the book of Malachi, there is a book being written when the people of God gather and speak much of his name, there is a book written of those words, and we're going to get to heaven one of these days, and there it's going to be, just like you can, like you're going to be reading in the, the, in the, the Bible that we have today, and the archives of heaven will, uh, they'll be teaching the young ones, and they'll say, now in earthly time, back in the year of 2012, uh, it is recorded where the gatherings of the people in a place called Fort Worth, Texas, and God's prophet, Bill Winston, spoke the blessing of the Lord upon the people. And great grace was upon them all. And then it'll begin to record the places and the times where the, the, the blessing was the, was the outpourings of the Holy Ghost and the, the miracles that are recorded. Amen. Now you're living it. Now, Bill, there, there, there's a couple of issues now that, that, that we need to talk about here. You can go ahead and be seated. Uh,
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the word of the Lord just came to me and said, Th this is part of the speaker's offering today. Amen. In fact, those of you that would like to have an offering envelope right now for, for the speaker's offering this afternoon, raise your hand. The ushers will hand you an, uh, an envelope. We'll just, we'll just complete this, saucy, this saucy. offering. Mm, mm, mm. Be divided equally among our speakers. Praise yes. God. Now, Gloria and I are not in that offering. We are well taken care Praise. of. But we sow into that offering into our speakers. Mm. Uh, there's... Um, Two things. One, when God opened the eyes of Gehazi and he saw war chariots lining the, the hills. When did those chariots, when did they get there? I mean, they just followed that prophet around wherever he went. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of war chariots just ready. No. When did they come? Now, there's a difference between angelic operations in the earth in the Old Covenant and in the New Testament. Yes, now, in the Old Covenant, we get a picture of angelic assignment and operation at Jacob's ladder. Angels were moving up and down according to assignment and so forth, very special assignments. So that those would come under that Root. But now in the New Testament, they have all been sent forth. Yes. Remember that? Uh -huh. Ministering yes, spirits yes. sent forth to minister for those yeah. shall be heirs yeah. of salvation. Yeah. Now, they all already here now. They ain't no more Jacob ladder no more. Yes. But when did they come? On the day of Pentecost. Yes. When God took back over the heavenly. Yes. The Holy Ghost came. That whole bunch came with him. That's the reason it made so much noise. <laughs> now, if you'd been anywhere in the planet, I'm totally convinced you'd have heard that noise. Amen. As the Holy Spirit and all angelic forces re-entered this atmospheric envelope, and the, the prophet didn't say it was a rushing mighty wind. He said it sounded like one. Now, there were no loud noises. That's correct. There were no trucks making noises. There were no horns making noises. There were no TVs. There were no radios. There wasn't any noise. The earth was a relatively quiet place. I mean, even if you had thousands and thousands of people together and they all shouted at one time, I mean, that's about the loudest thing you ever heard unless there's a storm come through. Or some kind of spontaneous explosion. Maybe somebody didn't even know why something blew up. Goodness. And all the, all the prophet had to rely on was hurricanes and tornadoes yeah. Yeah. to describe the sound that he heard. Now, I said all that to put us back in that place there. Now, the prophet. Wasn't nervous at all. He already had it in his heart. He'd already, he already had the Word in him about it. The Word of the Lord had come to him. Now, what was that Word? There's more you than there are them. So he had it in his spirit. That, that, that army didn't impress him a bit. But now, when did they manifest? When he said, there's more of us than they are of them. Huh? Yes, sir. Does that follow the faith line? Yes, it does. It yes, does, it does. does. 
Now, let's take that same thing now over into the restoration and the restoring of God's properties, in, including his garden, back into the hands of God's people. Now, he, he, he started that immediately. The problem all the way through here is he kept coming up with it and couldn't get nobody to take it. Can you imagine all that property God had outlined out there couldn't get but two men that are, that are willing to take it? All the rest of them crying, moaning, groaning, belly aching around about it. And all the time God told them what to say. Mm. But they come back saying something else. So they got what they said. Amen. What did they say? Instead of what, instead of what Joshua and Caleb say, what did they say? We can't do it. Huh? What was their running response to God? We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in the 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 desert. Oh, we're going to die in the desert, man. <laughs> and God said, okay. die in the yeah. desert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't say what he said. He was forced to say what, what they, they said, said, and they died in the desert. <laughs> and that set up the 70 or 80 lifespan syndrome. Mm. Now, God said 120. He sure did, didn't he? Medical science says 120. But everybody else is saying 70 or 80. <laughs> so they dying at 70 or 80. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You have been blessed. This, this is not... This is not a Tuesday afternoon thing. Remember what the theme of this meeting is? You remember what the Lord said about this meeting? This is the great lifting up week. That's it. This is the great That's lifting up week. That's it. Now, the Lord God has released through his prophet words and has blessed us. We are blessed. We have been lifted up. Let's take those words, put them in our mouth, and go up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord thanksgiving for Bill Winston's ministry.